Okay, so we're going to start um, building some primitive modules. Basically, this is a translation for hot chisel work and blacksmithing, but give you a better idea of how we're going to actually um, move material around in the digital world so that we can make um, things look and behave like uh, the original. So we're making a chisel blank, and it's a pretty simple module. We're just going to call a cylinder again and we're going to have to pass it some information, right? So we need to dictate the length of our chisel. And uh, we're going to need to know the diameter of our chisel. Got to spell it right every time, every time. And then declare the number of faces that you intend to have. So we're just going to call that face number. So right now we're trying to make a simple model that we can translate later into other components. So we're going to pass some information. We've got length, diameter, and face number. So as we go through we want to test out our, our function and make sure that chisel blank actually does what we think. So let's just give it some numbers. Um, diameter is, uh, you know, maybe 15 seems fine. And we'll give it 64 faces just to make sure that it comes out round. Alright, so there we go. Got a nice chisel. Um, one thing we forgot to do, we want the diameter to be over 2, right? Um, because it takes 2 radius to make a diameter. So now what we need to do is take this module and pass it through another module. Um, so that we can make a pointed chisel. And this will just give you an idea of how we go through the shaping process in blacksmithing as well as in um, the digital world. Uh, the chisel is just sort of a mental handle, but uh, we're going to start there. So you can type in all of this for chisel blank, or you can just take this information because we want to pass it exactly the way that it is. Uh, before you do that, though, you want to take the time and make sure that <laughs> everything's spelled correctly. Otherwise, you're going to end up undoing a lot of your hard work. So now we need to make uh, the chisel point, right? So we're calling a cylinder, and then um, we're going to define the length of the chisel point as uh, point length. So that way we know how long and how pointy our chisel is. And because we're making a cone, um, we're going to need to call two diameters, right? So there'll be R1, and I'm just guessing, but I'm guessing R1 is going to be 0 over 2, and that R2 is going to be um, diameter over 2. And that's going to make sure that all of the um, parts of the chisel line up and still look normal. So there we go. There's our function. Cool. So now we need to add a couple of new variables. So point length, right? That's our new variable. And then we're going to need diameter. Spelled correctly. Uh, we also need length. And I try to list these in the same um, convention each time so that when I'm looking at numbers that I'm using for different modules, I can really understand um, what I was doing originally. So then we call chisel point. And we need to pass it some information, so point length. Um, I think 13 is a good reasonable distance. And then we're going to pass length, which is just the 100 that we had before and then 15 and 64, right? And so I'm using the numbers that were up here just because that's a good representative number set. And when we go to render this, um, you're going to notice nothing has changed. And one thing to be aware of is that we have two object files here. There's the chisel blank and there's the chisel point, and they're occupying the same space. Okay. So let's take a look at just the chisel blank. So I've commented this section out. Um, and what you can do, if you really want to see what's going on in there, um, is you can use a percent symbol to ghost your chisel blank 
and ask yourself, oh, okay, I see my chisel point, but it's inside my chisel blank. And so now you have to realize that, well, you need to move one or the other, whether it's the chisel or the, um, the chisel point or the chisel blank. I'm going to move the chisel blank. I'm just going to translate that. 0 and x, 0 and y, um, and then we're going to do in z-axis the point length, right? And that should put it right where we need it to be, in theory. And it looks like I'm missing a square bracket. There we go. Alright, so we're right where we want to be. So now we can unghost that. You can see the entire file, right? Looks great. So now if we want to make another chisel, like a cup chisel, or an inverted cone chisel, we're going to take that same code, we're going to rename it inverted cone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to swap the values in, in radius 1 and radius 2. So one of them is diameter 0, one is not, and so we're going to comment out to the point, and then we're going to call the exact same information, right? but we're going to rename it chisel inverted cone. Okay. And let's see what we've got. Alright, so you see there's a slight problem with our chisel in the fact that uh, the cylinder isn't actually near the cone, and um, additionally we're not cutting away. So a couple of things we need to do. Let's get those down to each other. So instead of point length, let's just bring it down to zero. Alright, so now we know that if we ghost our object, it's inside, right? And so now what we need to do Let's cut that away. So type difference. And then looks the same when you render it. However, if we ghost it, let's see what we got. So you'll notice that right here there is just a green disk, and that is mathematically unsolvable because the two faces are shared. So we left the translate function in so we can just move it up. It doesn't need to be a lot, just a little bit. And now you can see that we have a cone inside our chisel point. And more interestingly, if we choose to, we can make that cone any shape we'd like. So we're going to save this as chisel blanks, or uh, maybe chisel set. And that'll be chisel set one.